Hey guys, so the world's largest open pit mines are on every continent. They are formed through years-long mining for minerals extracted through open mining. It's one of the simplest and cheapest ways to extract limestone, diamond, iron ore, coal, as well as other minerals found in the upper layers of the Earth's crust. Now, these mines are made artificially and exist only as long as they are maintained. So, mining minerals in open pit mines without mine shafts is a method used all over the world. The idea of open pit mining is that the dead rock layers towards the surface conceal minerals that would be found in horizontal layers in mines. These layers are like steps that go from top to bottom, with the lower layers overtaking the upper ones. The height of a step depends on the density of the rock and the technique used. It can range from several yards to several dozen yards. Therefore, the process occurs by making a dish with an increasingly larger width and depth. Transport connections in these mines are seen through spiral ramps around the mine. So, if you look at one from above, it might look a little bit like a maze. Now, most of the largest open pit mines in the world contain copper. One of the largest ones that has a giant source of copper ore is Bingham Canyon, a mine southwest of Salt Lake City, Utah. Bingham Canyon is one of the world's deepest mines with a crater over 0.75 miles deep. The pit's diameter at its widest point is 2.5 miles across, and its total area is 1,900 acres. The scale of this mine is astounding. This mine is said to have contained more copper than any other in the world at over 19 million tons. The mine has been in active use for over 150 years. So, 1,400 people currently work in the mine and they extract 450,000 tons of minerals daily. Excavators transport up to 89 tons of ore in one load. The ore is loaded into a dump truck that can carry 230 tons of ore per trip. There's a series of conveyors that are 5.6 miles long that deliver the ore to an enrichment plant. The mined ore is processed at a smelting plant. The ore goes through a concentrator where huge chunks are pulverized. The smelting then separates the dense rock from the metal-containing particles, which are 28% copper, with smaller amounts of silver, gold, lead, molybdenum, platinum, and palladium. The filtered liquid concentrate is sent through a 17-mile-long pipe to a smelting plant, where it is dried and then combined with oxygen in an oven to oxidize the iron and sulfur. The oxidized iron is separated and the gaseous sulfur dioxide is isolated and sent to a local acid plant to be processed into valuable sulfuric acid. All that's left is the liquid copper sulfide, a so-called mat. The mat with 70% copper is cooled in water to form a hard compound similar to sand. Then it is combined with oxygen in an instant conversion oven that produces a liquid copper with 98.6% purity. This copper is then poured into a 705-pound anode plate and sent by railroad to an oil processing plant. There, the anode plant is compressed and has alternating non-rusting steel cathodes placed on it. Finally, it is put into a vessel containing an acid bath. When the elements are electrified, the anodes slowly melt, releasing the copper ions that settle on the cathodes forming 99.99% pure copper. The alloys and valuable metals settle on the bottom of the electrolytic vessels as anode sludge. During the solvent extraction, gold and silver are extracted and melted in induction ovens. So, the copper ore was first discovered in this canyon in 1848 by two Bingham brothers who were having their herd graze there. They were part of a religious society and immediately told their leader, Brigham Young, what they found. He said to drop the idea of mining minerals in favor of creating a settlement 
which was the top priority for the community. So in 1850, the Bingham family moved away, leaving the mine behind. The mining began only in 1863. So at first, it was limited to placer gold. The copper required processing and a railroad which only appeared in the canyon in 1873. Another important event happened in 1903 when Daniel C. Jackling and Enos A. Wall organized the Utah Copper Company. They decided to create an open pit mine in the canyon, as well as steam excavators and the railroad, which resulted in the largest industrial mining complex in the world by 1912. The Kennecott Copper Corporation was founded in 1906 to use mines in Kennecott, Alaska. And they purchased 25% of the financial interest in Utah Copper. By 1923, their interest had increased to 75%. The Bingham Canyon mine increased and by 1920, 15,000 people already lived in the area. With more advanced mining methods, the mining settlement's population decreased and was only 800 by 1980. Now in 1985, the open pit mining was stopped. The famous canyon had belonged to Kennecott for over 50 years, but the 1970s crisis drove them nearly to bankruptcy. In 1989, the Rio Tinto Group obtained the asset and modernized the mine, mill, and smelter. The mine owners replaced the old railroad with 1,000 wagons to conveyors and pipelines to transport the ore and waste, which decreased expenses by almost 30%, returning production to profitability. Now, Rio Tinto is still the owner today. The latest estimates indicate a total reserve of known and unknown amounts of ore in Bingham Canyon at 637 million tons of ore, with an average content of 0.48% copper, 0.032% molybdenum, and 0.18 grams per ton of gold. In 1966, Bingham Canyon designated as a National Historic Landmark. Now, the constantly increasing size of the mine is a reason for frequent arguments between large mining companies and environmental organizations. Attempts to close the mine are, as of yet, unsuccessful, but thousands of experienced specialists all over the world thinks it's boom, incredibly dangerous. Support for that argument includes the strong landslide that happened on April 10th, 2013. About 2.5 billion cubic feet of dirt and rock roared down the side of the pit. Since the large mine steps create a high risk for landslides, an interferometric radio location system was installed previously to monitor the ground stability. This results in warning provided by the system, so the workers stopped what they were doing before disaster, expecting a landslide, and no one was harmed. After the landslide, operations were paused for a few months, but now everything is back to as it was. Ecologists look at the mine only negatively. Its creation destroys the soil, cuts down trees, and interferes with underground waterways. Explosions and machine noise scare animals and birds. The dust settles on the leaves of nearby trees, resulting in suppressed growth. Various federal agencies that deal with protecting the environment use strict laws to pressure the copper mining company to conform to ecological norms. Since the early 1990s, Kennecott has spent over $400 million cleaning the suffering areas to avoid standard laws that would put them on the Superfund National Priorities List. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like, comment, let me know if you learned something new here. And uh, we'll see you again next time. <laughs>